Hello everyone. In this new tutorial, we will make a penguin character using different sculpting tools available in Blender. If you are completely new to sculpting or 3D modeling, then you can check my other tutorials as well. So let's start with this one. The process will be similar to my previous tutorials. Select the default cube and add a 3 level subdivision with Ctrl 3. Apply the modifier also. Shade smooth the object. I will move it up so we have some space below. Press Shift D to create a copy of the object. Right click as you move so it snaps back and remains aligned with the original object. Position it in the lower side. Make the object bigger. This part will become the body. For the arms, create a copy from the body and move it to the side. Using the transform tool, make it smaller and thinner. Rotate it and place it near the top side of the body. Now add a mirror modifier for the other side arm. Select the body as mirror object in the modifier. Let's add the feet. I will simply reuse the body object again, make it smaller and long. Position the object in the lower bottom side. Add a mirror modifier for this as well. For the beak, I will repeat the same process, making duplicate copies and placing them on the front of the head. Make any adjustments in the size as needed. For the eyes, I will duplicate the arm object, move it above. The mirror modifier will automatically get carried over as well. Now press Alt-R to reset the rotation of the object. After that, press Alt-S to reset the scale changes. This will bring back the object back to its original base shape. Position the eye object in the front of the head. Coming back to the foot object, while you can create duplicate copies here, I, this time I will enter the edit mode. With all the faces selected, shift D to create two copies of the foot object. Press L to select all faces of one element. The main difference using this technique is that we are creating additional objects inside the same one object. Make the size smaller and adjust the position. Our base blockout model is ready. Feel free to make any design changes as you like. Now I will select all the parts and press Ctrl A for the transform menu. Apply the rotation and scale property. This will fix any sculpting brush issues not working correctly. In the outliner, press M and place all these objects in a collection. Rename it to Blockout. Right click, duplicate the collection and hide the original one. This can be useful in case we need to use it for some other design later. If you would like to view the wireframe of the model, go in the overlay menu, use the wireframe property. Better to assign a shortcut to it, I am using F4 key for this. Now select the head first and shift click the body to make them both selected. Right click to join them into one object. If we move the object, you can see the head is now part of the body. Moving it sideways affects the mirror modifier positions of the other objects which reference to this body object. So we don't need to change anything there. 
Switch to the Sculpt mode. In Blender 4.3, there are some new changes. A brush asset shelf has been added in the lower side which contains all brushes for sculpting. You can enable the names tag so you can see the name under each brush. There are three main default categories, general sculpt brushes, painting brushes and simulation brushes. I already have a tutorial on all the new updates if you like to check. I will be using the general sculpt brushes for now. It is also better to assign custom shortcuts to main brushes so you can quickly access. To set any shortcut, right click or add to quick favorites. For instance, I am using G for the grab move brush. After that, turn off fast navigate setting so our sculpt does not switches to low resolution during viewport movements. In the remesh setting, enable fix poles. This setting seems to give slightly better results. Enable X symmetry so both sides are updated during sculpting. Now with the grab move brush selected, use a low strength value. We will start refining the shape of the body. You can also right click to change brush settings. If we try to sculpt near the neck, you can see both the head and the body are affected. In case you would like to limit sculpting only on one object area, then go in auto masking menu, enable typology property. Now only that part will be affected which falls under the brush area. This works for joined objects which have individual objects in them like here the head and body are joined into one. Hover mouse over any object and press Alt Q to make it active. Let's switch over to the arms and refine the shape. Hold shift during sculpting to smooth the shape. For the foot slightly make them long. As we have auto masking option enabled, it allows to change the shape of each object in it. If we turn off auto masking then we can change the shape of all the elements together. Make sure to save your file. One more shortcut to access the brushes is through W key. It will show a pop-up window. But first enable the 3D Pi viewport add-on otherwise it will not show. Next we will remesh the head and the body. Make the body object active. Press R for the remesh grid. If we use a big grid size then the shape may lost its form. So use a slightly dense grid size so there is more resolution. Also do not go too dense otherwise it can affect blender performance. Press Ctrl R for the remesh operation. Now the head and the body will be joined seamlessly as one. Shift smooth to remove any facets or blocky areas. I will make small adjustments in the shape. For the eye sockets, use the inflate brush. Hold Ctrl and slightly brush over the eye areas to push the area inside. Increase the strength to 1. Select the eye object and move them so they feel more fit in the head area. Rotate and scale the object as needed. It is also good to rename some objects like the eyes body so we can find them easily later. Now let's make the shape of the beak. I will slightly increase the speed of the video here as most of the process is same as before. In the area where the neck and the head area joins, I will use the inflate brush to make it more thick.
Coming back to the foot object, remesh and smooth the shape. We will use the flatten brush to make the shape flat under the foot. But we will run into one issue. The brush affects the other side as well when we are sculpting. So I will undo this. To limit a brush to only affect the visible side when we are sculpting, enable the view normal setting in the auto masking menu. Then the brushes only affects one side. Let's join the arms with the body next. You can set any pose for the arms as they are separate now. Before joining, apply any modifiers first. Select the arms and the body, Ctrl J and join them. In the sculpt mode, remesh the object. If the results look distorted, then you can undo the remesh operation. Slightly increase the grid size so it is smaller and remesh so the arms and body details remain after remeshing. Just remember not to use a very small grid size. Check the entire object and shift smooth to remove any bumps. I will use the pinch brush around the eyes to slightly sharpen the edges. Use the grab move brush alongside. We will move the eye objects slightly bigger to fit them. Now we will make a small leg part under the body. You can use the forward slash key to isolate an object during sculpting if there are other objects surrounding it. I will select the mask brush and draw a small round shape under the body. To remove any mask, you can brush over while holding control. Invert the mask with Ctrl I. This will make the unmask visible area to be affected by sculpting only. Using the inflate brush, I will extrude the area to make a small leg shape. After that, use the move brush to further refine. You can clear the mask with Alt M. Please keep in mind you do not have to follow my exact design. Try any other changes that you would like to make. I will now join the foot with the body. Apply any modifiers on the object first and Ctrl J to join. In the sculpt mode, press R to see the grid size. We will use the same size as before and control R to perform the remeshing. Since the object sculpt is becoming more high resolution, it can take a few seconds before the remesh operation is complete. Shift smooth the areas around the foot and leg join. I will continue with the small adjustments and making the shape more round.
Rotate the viewport to see the model from other side angles as well. Sometimes one thing looks good from the front but not correct from the side. Using the crease sharp brush, I will add some small details now. Use a lower strength value and turn on stabilize stroke setting from the stroke menu to have a better control during sculpting. If you would like, you can continue refining the shape and making changes. Take your time here, our sculpting part is complete for now. Few additional quick workflows. During sculpting, remesh the object as needed to generate a cleaner mesh topology for smooth results whenever the object starts getting distorted. To remove any part of the object during sculpting, you can use the trim tools, this will delete the part in it. You can use the symmetry tool to make both sides same. To add any object later to the sculpted mesh, join and remesh to seamlessly make it one. To quickly create a low poly version out of the sculpted model, you can use the quadriflow tool. However, results may require manual fixing of the mesh. Now for the last part we will briefly look into vertex painting which is the process of adding colors to our sculpted model. Please keep in mind this method is good for high resolution models. We are painting on one layer but it is quick way to visualize your model with colors. Using a low poly model will show pixelated colors. I also have a separate tutorial on this topic as well. In the paint category, we have several painting tools. I will select the paint hard brush, set a color and using a strength of 1 and start painting. You can change the viewport matte cap if the colors look flat. In the tools window, you can set a color palette and change other brush properties. You can use X to swap colors. Hold shift while painting to smoothly blend the colors. For the eyes and beak, I will assign separate materials. To see the colors in the preview or render mode, go in the shader editor. Add a color attribute node and connect it to the BSDF color property. Select the color in the node. Try using different paint brushes to see the results. This model is available for free download from my Gumroad page if you like to check it. I hope you find this tutorial useful in some way. If you like to see more in the future, then please give this video a like, turn on notification bell and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.